Hello everyone, so today I am going to talk about the best budget laptops that you can buy right now. These are the best options if you are a college student or someone who needs a laptop for all your office work. So uh, for this guide, I am not including laptops with newer 13th gen or Ryzen 7000 series processors as they're quite expensive right now. But don't worry, last gen Intel and AMD CPUs still pack a punch and are more than capable of handling your everyday tasks. As always, I'll be rating each laptop across 10 categories with different weights. For example, relatively more important aspects such as the design, display, performance, battery, keyboard and value for money will carry a maximum score of 10, while all the remaining criteria will be scored out of 5. That is 80 points in total, so let's begin. Okay, let's start with the HP 14S. This is the only laptop in our list with a compact 14-inch form factor. So yeah, this one is for those who prefer portability firsthand. Weighing just uh, 1.46 kgs, it is quite easy on the backpack and carrying it with one hand while you're on the go is no problem either. But its smaller chassis also means that you'll miss out on a dedicated numpad here. As for the display, this 14-inch Full HD screen offers good sharpness and viewing angles. Uh, things do look a bit extra punchy and contrast heavy, but I guess most people may like that. Moreover, powering this laptop is AMD's Ryzen 5 5500U CPU, which is a bit old by 2023 standard, but trust me, it is still more than powerful for your regular everyday tasks. Its design is also fine for a budget laptop. As expected, HP has used an all-plastic build and although there is some flex in the keyboard deck, this budget laptop does not look that cheap or anything. But one thing that I'm not fond of here is that its keyboard does not have backlighting and the onboard audio and webcam quality is nothing to write home about either. Moving on, Dell's latest Inspiron 153520 is yet another budget laptop that you can consider, whose biggest highlight is its screen. Not that it's an OLED display or anything, but Dell has offered a smooth 120Hz refresh rate here. And let me just tell you, it makes a big difference even in everyday tasks. Everything from scrolling through websites to switching between apps feels very smooth and fluid. Plus, the actual quality of the screen is pretty good too. It's a full HD LCD panel with decent colors overall, covering about 66% sRGB gamut in our testing. I am also impressed to see that Dell is using premium aluminum build on the lid, while there is no concerning flex on the keyboard deck either. So yeah, it's also a pretty well-built machine. But uh, something that is rather average about this thing is its keyboard. To be honest, it feels very cheap and the button presses aren't as satisfying as I would like. Um, I do like the fact that it has a spill-resistant design, but I wish Dell had put a little more effort into offering a better keyboard in the first place. Moving on, its uh, bottom-firing speakers are good enough for binging Netflix or casually listening to music, but nothing too fancy. But budget laptops aren't known for their outstanding audio anyway, so I am not complaining. Now, taking the bronze medal on our list is the ASUS VivoBook 15. As the name suggests, this is a 15 inches laptop, but it is surprisingly lightweight, which means you'll have no trouble carrying it to your school, college, or even work. Pair that with a minimalistic design and a bunch of fun color options to choose from, the ASUS VivoBook 15 definitely stands out from the sea of boring looking budget laptops. Other than this, ASUS has the performance side of things covered pretty well too. It's got Intel's Core i5-1235U processor, which is pretty common in this price range. So I had no trouble going about my everyday tasks like uh, browsing through multiple Chrome tabs and some lightweight editing on Photoshop while listening to some tunes on Spotify. Of course, with just 8GB RAM on board, it struggles with multitasking every now and then, but that is true for all budget laptops, so it's okay, I guess. The VivoBook 15 has a decent display too. To be fair, the default color tuning on our unit was quite horrible with a weird yellowish tint, but after calibrating it with our colorimeter, things look pretty good, I must say. So if you're thinking of getting this laptop, I'll make sure to link the calibrated color profile in the description for you to download. Anyway, its uh, keyboard is also pretty great. The keys are full size, nicely laid out and have a good 1.4mm travel distance. 
but more importantly, it also offers a backlit keyboard. The only thing that's missing here is a slightly larger battery since this laptop didn't last more than four hours on my everyday use, which is just about average in my books. All right, let's now talk about the Acer Aspire 5. Visually, not uh, much has changed from its 2021 counterpart, but you know what? That's not a bad thing, really. This design still looks sleek and uh, minimal, and there are a bunch of color options to choose from. And after the VivoBook 15 above, this is the only other laptop on our list that offers a backlit keyboard. Moving on to the display department, it's pretty standard stuff. A full HD screen with a 45% NTSC color gamut. Although Acer says that this display has just uh, 200 nits of brightness, we found it to be around 248 nits in our testing. That's still average, definitely, but you can be sure that this screen can get plenty bright for indoor use. Under the hood, the Acer Aspire 5 is powered by the same Intel Core i5-1235U processor, which means it's plenty powerful too. Apart from this, the Aspire 5 also has impressed me with its battery life. With my usage patterns, it lasted me for around 5 hours on average, which is pretty decent. Finally, taking the gold medal in my list of the best budget laptops is the Lenovo IdeaPad 3. I've got to say that this laptop offers an impressive mix of design, performance, and other features at an affordable price. It delivers excellent performance in a surprisingly sleek and sturdy design. Yes, it's plastic made, but this uh, chassis is rigid enough and does not feel cheap at all. You can even lay the lid to almost 180 degrees if that is something that's important for you. The IdeaPad 3 is also equipped with the same i5-1235U CPU as most other laptops on our list, and it is also loaded with 8GB RAM in the base variant, but you can add another 8GB stick for a smoother workflow. But what makes the IdeaPad stand out among the crowd are its few neat nitty-gritty features that really contribute to a fairly premium user experience. For example, it has the flip-to-open feature that wakes up the laptop as soon as you open the lid, like on a MacBook. You can then proceed to sign in via the fingerprint sensor. You can also enable fast charging from the Lenovo Vantage app, which can juice up the battery from 0 to 80% in just about an hour. However, like last year, one thing you need to be aware of is that the Lenovo IdeaPad 3 comes with two display variants, one with TN and another with an IPS panel. So I would recommend you to go with the IPS variant because the TN panel variant is not very good. So there you have it guys, these were my picks for the best budget laptops of 2023. I will be listing down some more options in the comments, so do check them out too. And I hope this video was useful to you and if it was, don't forget to subscribe since I am coming up with more laptops and buy guy contents in the coming days. For now, see you soon and have a nice day.